Sorry, I'm losing now. my teeth. Nom, 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 nom. All right, here we go. We do this. All of juice. Uh, what do I? How do I intro the show tonight? What's the What's the game plan? This one time there was a show, and it's called Horses and Hunger Nets, and they were really God. Go. Ow. Okay. <laughs> Hey man, this one time there was a show and it was called Horseshoes and Hand Grenades and they were really good. Lucky you, you're listening to episode 381 for April 20th, 2017. Smoke weed every day. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, the show that brings you the latest and greatest and non crazy news from all over the planet. Yes, we go gather that news up like a bulldozer and we just bulldoze that crap right into your ear holes Ow. via our voices. Yes, that is what we do here on the show. We also kind of litter the show with weird little things that we want to talk about because no one tells us what to do. Because we are the hosts. I am Steven. And I am joined, as always, by the wonderful, the amazing, the incredible, the girl with the brown hair, Smash a lot. <laughs> I wash my hair with a with a bar of shampoo from a hippie site. You do you? So you have your bathroom is basically made up of an herb garden. Um, <laughs> do you take like? Would you want to wash your hair? Most people <laughs> just have this imagery. That you have a like a blender in your bathroom and you're just like Oh my like, god, that would be awesome. <laughs> you're like, oh, you know what I need to wash my hair with today? How about a banana and an egg and a honey? half an half an avocado and some honey and maybe a little bit of uh what's that stuff? Coconut oil. Literally everything that you just said I have put on my head. <laughs> Eggs I'm are good for your hair. Eggs are yeah, and uh, avocado. Mm -hmm. That was fun. So I made breakfast the other day, and I, I smashed up. I made Ezekiel toast, and then I smashed up an avocado and put lemon and uh, garlic salt in it, right? Avocado and lemon, really good for your face. So after I finished eating, I'm like, okay, I can't eat anymore. So I rubbed it all over my face. I'm like, I'm awesome. I'm putting an avocado and lemon mask on my face. It started burning, and it smelled so funny, and I'm like, Oh, I put garlic salt on my face. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and it was not a, it was not a, I, I, that one was a fail. Wouldn't that burn? I mean, that should burn some of the stuff off your face, though. Like, would it Nobody, take my beard like, off? You would just smell, like, it was just, like, I didn't want garlic in my pores. And the two seconds it was on, it made my face really soft. You but. eat enough garlic that it comes out of your pores. Is it just a problem when it's going in? <laughs> like, is it the inward motion of the garlic? It's okay if it oozes out of your face. It's worse if it goes in. I hate you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering because your your uh, charcoal toothpaste just everything that you do fascinates me. Because most of us just go to the supermarket and we rely on the the gene the scientists at Crest or Colgate to tell us what we should do. Um. I basically brush my teeth with coconut oil. Like, that's how my teeth stay white. So, did you just read the chat? Because there was this... Uh, Jamal's... He needs some aloe right now. Like, or some colloidal silver. Because kid just got burned. Yeah? What do you do? Um... I, I don't... I'm looking and I don't... It starts... No one tells me what to do. I seceded from the union, except he said seceded. <laughs> and so Dress stepped in and said, the word you're looking for is seceded. Seceded is something you didn't do when you tried to English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a sick burn. Oh my god, I love you guys so much. Yeah, don't don't worry about Dress. He's an asshole, sir. It's okay. <laughs> that was so good, though. That was really good. Dude, so big news. Um, we're going to Dragon Con this year. That's not the big news. The biggest uh, of the big news, Stan Lee is going back to Dragon Con this year. Shut your mouth. Stan Lee, at like a billion years old, will be at Dragon Con. And I'm pretty pumped about that. Oh my god. Oh my god. What if we get the bump from Stan Lee? Oh, that'd be so awesome. 
That'd be so can we, awesome. Can I, can I walk up to Stan Lee and go to bump? I don't think anybody walks up to Stan Lee. I think, I think he just, he walks up to you if he wants to. He walks on air at places like Dragon Con. Like people just, they, they come around him and they put him in his wheelie roll chair and they just hold, <laughs> hoist him up in the air. Like you are the friend of the nerds. You have given us all that we love. This story, you know, those stories back in the day, I don't know if you've ever read a comic from the sixties. They're painful to read. They're, um, they're pretty, they're pretty rough. I can't, I don't know what the, I think the oldest one I've read was, uh, Watchmen, I think. Oh, look at all the pretty rainbows. <laughs> oh, where'd that come from? That's fun. Yay. Hey, emojis. Yay. Uh, no, so yeah, that one's not even that bad. Like, I'm talking about the cheesy comics, like when Spider-Man is holding his face in the picture and it's like, if only I could stop somebody from doing a thing, but my spidey sense is disabled. Oh, no. Oh, you know, yeah. like it's. It's telling you exactly what the character is thinking Show, rather than showing don't you. Tell. Yeah, that was uh that's a Chuck Palahniuk writing. We finished Iron Fist. Oh, how did that go? I'm sure it lifted the ending just skyrocketed to the top of your list of things that people need oh to see. Oh my god. Like none of the actors are inherently awful, but the char- like the main character inexplicably goes through this complete change from one episode to another there was no like progression so he was just super happy and nothing bothered him and like mega cheese centered and then he was like this angry you know when Landon gets really mad is just oh yeah like, over dramatic face shaking for the sake of being funny <sighs> it was that really that's sad yeah that's really unfortunate I'm sorry that the you right- wasted so much time um, Bad. Were you ever a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000? No, I don't like funny things. Apparently. Oh, yeah. That was Mystery... So I started watching the new season of Mystery Science Theater last night. We were supposed to watch Better Call Saul, but Stephanie's like, I've been dealing with a baby all day. I'll be down in a minute. And then she never came downstairs. So I was like, hmm. Are you serious? I suppose I'll just eat this drumstick and watch Mystery Science Theater. Did because, she fall asleep? Yeah, she fell asleep. Uh, oh, that's so fun. It's it's cheesy as all crap, but I laughed a lot. I highly recommend it. I mean, it's got Felicia Day and Patton Oswalt in it. And they're, Is it really? Yeah, they're cheesing it up pretty pretty hard. Uh, but it's great. It was fun. They were making fun of a movie called Reptilicus. It was a, 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 a kaiju movie from Ooh, Denmark. Kaiju! Yeah, so this, dead liz- this scientist finds a, a lizard tail in the jungle. And it's frozen, and when it thaws, because he accidentally leaves the fridge open, it uh, <laughs> it grows, it regrows the monster. Like you know, that's because there's regenerative stuff. But usually, it's the lizard regrowing the tail. This was the tail regrowing the giant lizard, and it looks like a Mardi Gras float. It's ridiculous. Wait, is it like an older movie that oh, was supposed yeah. to be serious? Yeah, it was like a 1960s. They usually make fun of movies from the 50s and 60s because there were so many, and they were mm. all so bad. Was it Japanese? No, it was from uh, Denmark. Oh, did you already say that and I didn't catch yeah, that part? Yeah, it's a Denmark okay. movie, a kaiju movie from Denmark. Kaiju movie for Denmark from Denmark, huh? Yeah. But it was awesome. What happens in Denmark? Um, prostitution and weed. Denmark. Isn't that where? Oh my God, that's Denmark fun facts. Let's... Isn't that what Denmark does? Denmark most likely means land of the Danes. In Denmark, it rains or snows every second day. Nuh-uh. That's stupid. I can't live there. Denmark can be windy. Wait, these are the most generic, stupid. <laughs> Meet the Danes. That sounds like a good movie. Uh, there's <laughs> how the Denmark became a cycling nation. Oh, they ride a bunch of bicycles there. It's all yeah, about I, I some know bicycles. That people from like when they they come from Denmark here have a huge problem because huge, um, because you can't we, ride we bikes have here. we're not yeah we are not friendly to cyclists here at at all. Like our infrastructure isn't set up for it, and nobody's been trained for it. And if you go out west, it's better because yeah. we settled the west in like the 1800s, not the 1600s. So things are laid out a little bit friendlier like maybe it's just the cities i was in denver and they were like all the bikes all the time denver if you're from denmark then go to denver do they have an official religion because i'm looking at the list it's like religion church of denmark 
Do they Maybe have that's that? Like the Church of God. You're like, which? Do they do they worship God or their country? <laughs> That'd be like Church of America. I mean, a lot of people subscribe to the Church of America. America. The, this is yeah, no shite. Oh, they had Denmark Vikings? is a, oh wait the Danish monarchy. Monarchy. What? Monarchy. No, that's like, where they keep the monarchs. Laura and I went to the same English class. We the keep Danish all the kings in the monarchy. The monarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's like reliquary, but it's monarchy, <laughs> and it's the oldest continuing monarchy in the world, and has existed for over one zero 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 years. Yes. Oh, a thousand years? Yes. They really have a monarchy there? Apparently. That's nuts. I have, dude, so I just finished reading a, a book about Thomas Jefferson. Lordy yes. gracious. We were like inches from monarchy. Like inches. It's amazing. Really a lot of people want it. They just oh, they wanted it. Hamilton wanted it hardcore. Hamilton was like ma really? monarchy all the time. Yeah, and now people are singing all his praises and stuff in that play. But they were like, because people thought that democracy was going to be a total failure. They thought oh. they thought that you could not have a strong government with a democracy. That it was just a pitiful thing. And I was like, dang, people wanted a king even after they just kicked out a king. It's right. like they weren't upset about the monarchy. They were upset about the no the taxation. They were yeah, they were the fine way, yeah. with monarchy. And they the just, religious issues. Yeah, they wanted a monarchy. They just wanted one. They they didn't have a problem with the monarchy. They just wanted a monarchy that was close to them. So there were many just, that were even saying that there should be an inherited line of succession, like Egypt. Yeah, like like just like it, just like in uh, Britain. That's what they wanted. So and Thomas oh. Jefferson was like one of the. One of the stalwarts for democracy and Republican government. Oh, like, how did that... Who else wanted it? Who, uh, Hamilton wanted it. Adams wanted it. Like, they wanted it. They wanted the monarchy. Or at least a very strong central power. They wanted the president to have much more well, power than he does. Well, we basically have that now, so... It's called executive orders. We're not going to talk about that, because it'll just yeah, make everybody upset. No, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. Great success, everything's been. Great success. We'll win bigly. <laughs> everything's great. You won't believe what we're going to do. Did you say we win bigly? We we win bigly. You want to know why? Oh, this we is going to come win. through. Yeah, it didn't work. You didn't hear it. Only I heard it. Because I, I heard it. You heard it? It didn't come through on the recording for some reason. Oh, I finally hear something, and it doesn't get to do the fun thing. Right. Oh, oh yeah, Arrow. I think so much, Mr. Jefferson. We owe him more than we know. <laughs> it's amazing. He's on our money. I read so much. He's on a $2 bill. There's That's not many. money. Well, yeah, but it's not, like, legit. I mean, you can spend them, but it's not like they print a bunch, right? Well, you, you save them, and then you go, I have a $2 bill. Two dollar bill, y'all. No, nah, <laughs> three dollar bill, y'all. That was the Limp Biscuit album. Do you remember Limp Biscuit? Chocolate Starfish. Oh yeah, that was like their 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 album that was garbage, so no one listened their to it. Their swan anymore. song. Yeah, because that was the one after Rolling, 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 Rolling. Yeah. I only remember. The, I think I remember. I remember the thing that they did for um. Bow, 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 bow. Um, 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 spy movie with Ethan Hunt, Hawk, Mission somebody. Impossible. Oh, Yo's. yeah, they did the dur -dur -dur -dur. no, that's the James Bond thing. They did the other thing, the Mission Impossible song. I listened to that a million times to try and learn it on guitar. Uh, that's I, a friend of mine went, a friend of mine and I, frack, <laughs> me and a friend, <laughs> a friend and I. Yes, a friend and I went to uh, King College to visit his girlfriend, now wife, and I had to have that on repeat while I drove. And I'm like, I'm driving. Shouldn't I get to pick the song? Yeah. You Well, you, how do you do things on repeat? I, I don't want to punch somebody if I hear the same thing like three times. Why did I, I listen to, to the music I listen to? Repetition doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I had, so somebody sent uh, sent me a song to listen to at work the other day. And he was just like, this is the kind of stuff I'm into. And it was a technico techno thing. A lot of people like to listen to that when they're programming. I don't know why it's a programmer thing. But I was like, okay, oh. I'll listen to it. And it was like, do, 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 And I was like, okay, cool. That's been like four measures. It's time to introduce a new new sound. <laughs> it was just the whole way through. And I'm like, okay, that's like eight measures. 
New sound, please. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna choke somebody. And then finally, bing, bing, bing. It's got layered on top of that, and I'm like, this is not enough. This is not enough change. This is this is I I had to I almost threw my headphones and just ran out of the room screaming. I didn't know what to do. I can't I don't I can't listen to to full on techno. It or um what is it? It's like easy listening techno. <laughs> easy it's listening like techno? like house. Like if Bob Ross did techno? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's these happy little tones. It's like soft tone tech, but it's still the same thing. It's it's just like lots of super repetition stuff. And I'm like, can someone throw in a chainsaw or bang on a pot or something? Because <laughs> I'm going to start like pot. smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Like I try uh I just listen to normal music when I'm when I'm coding stuff. Like the closest I get to techno is churches. I like churches. But they um they have variation and they have a singer and it's very like it's very fun poppy sounding stuff. There's at least one song that sounds like a boss battle from a Final Fantasy game. Like churches. it's got, Yeah, churches with a V. So it's like C H V R C H E S. I don't think you'd like them. It's not something that I would normally listen to. And when I told Stephanie I listened to them and let her hear them, she was like, I don't know who you are. This isn't <laughs> this isn't the kind of stuff like you're always listening to like emo, screamo, punk, alternative, weird stuff. And this is not this is not your thing. I I wanna hear it. But it was. It was my thing, faux show. Cause it's I, I got all hooked to it for a little while. There's people singing in my headphones. You're bobbing your head. I can't hear those people. That's weird. But you can hear them. I, I don't I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> Where's the stop button? Uh, stop. I wouldn't say I like Screamo rock stuff. It, it, I, I could send you my entire Spotify list and you'd be like, I don't know any of these bands. And I don't know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, you, you do listen to, like, some of the stuff people are like, oh, such and such is touring. And I'm like, the only reason I know who that is is because of Steven. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> I got real excited because some people that I really like came and toured here recently, but I didn't get to go see them. Remember when I'm an adult. Remember when Combi Cries came and then and then I wanted to go see Combi Cries and then Stephanie and then you looked up a song title and it was this this oh. shit will f you up and then Stephanie's like talkie and then I felt bad. <laughs> She's like no, you can't go. It was, it was sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe Stabbing Westford will come one day. Or They're not they, a band anymore. They haven't been a get, band for eight years. Did somebody get stabbed westward? They, like, were one way, and then their last couple albums went another way because his girlfriend broke up with him, and then he had nothing more to, like, go on, and he got happy, so his music got really shitty. Oh, when people find happiness, it really ruins their art. Yeah, I know. Like, like you gotta, you gotta like, break up with you somebody. Why are yelling at your girlfriend for being a sack of shit anymore? I haven't written a song in over ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, Steven used to be in a band, and they were awesome. And I named a sword after them. We were great. We were the best band we'd ever heard before. <laughs> we were so awesome. <laughs> We went, they went and played in a park one time, like really lowly. They were just like gently, like we're a bunch of church kids from a Christian school, like swinging at dusk and playing the guitar and basically kumbaya, you know. And somebody called the cops because a bunch of teenagers were in the park at dusk. Yeah, we were causing some trouble. And, and we're like, like, we're not even, they're like, you need to leave. And I'm like, I live here, mother bleeper, you leave. <laughs> It's everybody told me to be good. They were like, Ashley, don't cause trouble. Those are policemen. <laughs> and we are good kids. Please, <laughs> for the love of goodness, do not let us get taken over by police. <laughs> that was, we should do a factoid. We should. We've been talking for a while. Factoid of the week. Your chances. <laughs> your chances of being killed by a vending machine are actually double- your chances of being bitten by a shark. So, <laughs> Marka, don't put your money or your willy in a vending machine. What would the vending machine do? Why would it kill you? What What would a vending machine do? Like fall over, on, over you? on you? Yeah. Do people die that way? 
Um, Killed by vending machine. I'm gonna. I Google mean, there it. was an episode of. Uh, oh, it was it was that swim thing. <laughs> It How? wasn't. I don't think it was Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I think it was the. They were like in a. It, they took like old cartoons and redubbed them to make them just ridiculous. <laughs> that sounds like yeah, mystery was, science theater. You would like that. I don't know why I liked that. I don't know why I liked Aqua Teen Hunger Force because I. It's so stupid and it had no point whatsoever. C Lab was great too. Anybody remember C Lab 2021? That's what it was. C Lab. There was a vending machine and then like scorpions came out of it. <laughs> that was it was either show. it was either that or uh Yeah, or Aqua Teen. I can't remember. Yes. C yeah. C Lab was so great. For me, it was like a return to the womb. Mother Ocean in all her wondrous glory. I think you're the reason I watched like some of those because I didn't really understand them, but then like I, I got really attached to Aqua Teen and I had posters and everything. C Lab just made me laugh all the time. Especially oh, the episode that's, that's where, where they I got crap on a crab cracker from. Yes, because he's swimming away. They're like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap on a crab cracker. Yes, I thought I was so clever because every time I said that, people would laugh at me, and I'm like, "Attention!" <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm the best. That was such a great show. I need to go watch that again. I think Lando has those on DVD. I imagine he would. I have three seasons of Space Goes Coast to Coast on DVD. Hey, we met that guy. <laughs> what is this? Subject to change to Steven sounds like the reason for a lot of Ash's wrongness. He's like a professional troll. He like goes. He is. He's your own personal troll. <laughs> he's called me late to everything, and you traditionally are the late one. And now he says I'm a bad influence. What the crap? This is that cheating. is hilarious. I'm just riding on it because I've been yelled at my entire life for being late, and I'm like, how does that feel, asshole? How does it feel now? Not without cause. Darn professional troll. World news. <laughs> just almost yelled two instead of world news because it's the number i press that's how tired i am <laughs> <laughs> two they just play them two <laughs> so dumb that would be really funny yes See, that, i would i wouldn't be able not to because i'm like i say what i read <laughs> jamal yes i am friends with lando calrissian that yeah. was his that was his aim name forever Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was his real is Landon is his name, but I've always called him Lando since like seventh grade. We, yeah, he's my longest. He is my longest, oldest, bestest friend. And by longest, he's an asshole. I mean, like we've been around. No, listen, he, but he's my a hole. That's the trick. Everybody, yeah, I feel like you're collecting assholes now. Why? I only have one a hole. Who else is an a hole? Have you met Jacob? Jacob's uh -huh. not my a-hole. Jacob's a wonderful person. Lando's my a-hole. <laughs> and but everybody has an a-hole. Like you probably have one that you have to convince everybody else to like. That's all of my friends. No, <laughs> that's, that's none actually of my very friends true. like each other. I'm like, oh my god, can't you just get along? Like if I get along with all of you, then all of you have something in common. No. You you are a social butterfly. You get along with everybody. You would get along with the Manson family if they if you were in the same room with them. <laughs> You'd find something to be okay with. You'd be like, yeah, this is funny. They'd be like, we should kill lots of people. You'd be like, that's not a good idea. We should do something else. And they'd be like, oh, that's great. You've really defused the situation. And the whole timeline would be different. You have, you know how many Aww. mass murders you've you've prevented just by being somewhere? Every time you Ooh, go to Dragon Con, you probably cool. prevent lots of terrible things from happening. You didn't even know. Mm, if, yeah, <laughs> just made a fun. I meet people in bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're a bathroom meter. I have so many pictures of people of me and random other people in bathrooms. It, They're all on Facebook, and I can't get a hold of them anymore. I don't know why you do that. Like, who... If I was in a bathroom and somebody's just like, ha ha ha, I'm washing my hands and talking to you, and they was like, can I take a picture with you? I'd be like, no. I think it's, it's different for girls. Girls, I, yeah. I'm you have community. Pretty positive it's different for girls in a bathroom. It's because it, it's at events too, like concerts and stuff, when A, they're most likely drunk, B, everybody's in a good mood and euphoric. Yeah. 
Dudes are just yeah. like, don't touch me, don't look at me. I'm washing my hands and I touch my wiener and I'm we going to the bathroom. We in public. Like, we don't whittle in public. Like, when we exit the stalls, we're dressed and nobody's like got their nay nays hanging out. Everywhere. Nobody's got their nay nays hanging out in the men's bathroom. Most of the time, there's little dividers between the stalls so you don't see each other. But when there really? aren't, you're playing a game of chess because everybody picks every other urinal. So you don't have to stand directly next to somebody whipping your so junk out. So what happens out. when like every other one is taken? Like, do you still just checkmate? You got to go somewhere. So you just walk. You just in between find the people. person who's like shaking, and you're like, "I'm gonna take your spot." Yeah, and like, screw the dude who puts two urinals in between him and the other guy when no one oh, else is in. Because he there. throws everything. Because he throws off the whole freaking system. You can't do that. Yeah, you do. You stare straight ahead. That's why on the wall there is a. Uh, there's always like some picture or news article or mirror. Thing. You know the funny thing is like if they put open stall in a women's bathroom, I don't think we would give a shit one third as much as you guys do. Like every camp I've ever been to has like open stalls and bathrooms and shit, and we're all just like boobs. Uh. -uh. <laughs> Women, for some reason, like, y'all are all hugging each other from kindergarten on. Like, dudes no, don't hug. No, that is false. Yeah, I did not touch people until I got into Christian school, and then, like, everybody was hugging me, and I'm like, what is the matter? S give me some space. Are you a devil worshiper? <laughs> what? You don't notice you don't hug people. But uh, then, but then you're like, oh, dudes. Hey, dude hug. Hug dude. Well, you yeah. Hug dudes. You hug I'm a, I'm a dude hugger. You're a dude <laughs> hugger. You're like, girls, gross. Get off me, unless you're Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I liked her, and then she lost her sh mind. <laughs> she was fun in Hackers. I should read this story. Yeah. I haven't even started it. To avoid trip with girlfriend, travel agents sent hijack threats to airports. <laughs> Speaking of girls. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Hyderabad police. I that's really awesome because I want to read that like Hyderabad. Um, I was gonna say that's like hell Hyderabad. Yeah, they arrested a travel agent who sent an email five days ago to the Mumbai police about possible hijack attempts at the Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Chennai airports. Though it was mentioned the email sender was a woman, the person turned out to be M. Vamshi Krishna, a man. He promised his girlfriend living in Chennai that he would take her on a jolly trip to Mumbai, but. By flight, but had no money to book the ticket. While chatting online, he tried to convince her to cancel the trip, but she didn't pay heed to his request. Unable to explain... Sorry, I'm burping because I had beer. Uh, unable to explain <laughs> to girlfriend that he had no money for the trip, Bamshi decided to create a situation so that flights are canceled. English is his second language, so instead of explaining to his girlfriend, it's just explain to girlfriend. <laughs> Which I think is really awesome. Thanks. Girlfriend. Bam, she created. It's also like Sam. Hold this, me. Yeah, hold, hold this. Uh, Bam, she created a fake ticket in his girlfriend's name from Chennai to Mumbai for April 16th and mailed it to her. A day before the scheduled journey, he went to an internet cafe in SR Nagar and created a fake email ID and mailed the Mumbai police commissioner. The email sent by the unidentified woman claimed that a group of 23 people were going to hijack aircraft from Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Chennai airports. What she had heard could be true or untrue, but she chose to inform the authorities as she felt it was her duty to do so as a citizen. The email ended with a line that read, Don't try to find me because you won't be able to. Subsequently, special anti-sabotage sweeps were carried out at Mumbai's Chachabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatabhatab
and they would have hopefully logs of all the computers that were locked. I still don't. I would. I would be very interested to know cameras. I mean, maybe they interviewed. Dear the India, how do you internet? Yeah, dear. I'm. I mean, I'm really curious because I'm not. I'm not that great at these types of inter- of things of forensic analysis. Our but, neighbor just moved from. Well, he he lived in Mumbai and then he was in California for a couple of years and he just moved here. And he said he missed the noise from Mumbai, and so he turned his bass all the way up. And I'm like, mm. I really miss the old lady that lived beside me that was never here. Yeah. What is it with people in apartments in subwoofers? It's like, I, you're like, okay, townhouse. Like, these are way too expensive for what they are. But you just expect, like, older people to live here? Like, people with kids, but not somebody that's going to woof their base? I'm like, it because ma- it makes me think of college. I instantaneously wanted to go blow his door off the hinges and <laughs> threaten him until he cried and moved back home to California. It just makes you want to throw people out of t- t- 10-story building. Yeah, and then scream, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Yeah, you do. That's awesome. We should watch that. Var, it's it's. I don't. What's the difference between a townhouse and apartment? Like a townhouse has two an apartment stories. is like a multi, multi play. Yeah, it's like apartments have two it's stories. A house or that's broken down into, like. Yeah, your townhouses usually apartments. have a, a thicker wall between it and other units to help make it feel more like a separate single family home. But yeah. it's not. It's it's no. a big apartment. <laughs> That's all. I don't want to see it. my neighbors. Like I, I want to live somewhere where I don't see my neighbors. That's that the, would make me the only reason happy. I've ever wanted to live in a house is because I didn't have to deal with neighbors stomping above me, stomping right. below me, playing nine billion decibel music all day. We had a neighbor in my last apartment that would just loved listening to just bumping techno all day. And I'm just like, could it stop, please? Oh, I remember that. And she was nice, which sucked. Because you're just yeah. like, I have to go down here and bang on her door and tell her, stop listening. Like, can you please turn your bass down a little? It's driving yeah, me crazy. Yeah, because you'd be laying on the couch, and I'm like, the wall is shaking. Yeah, it's just like, boom, boom, boom. Cause, and it's it's unfair in a lot of ways because bass travels. And you, like in your apartment, you might not realize it's traveling as bad as it is. Yeah. But if it's on, people can feel it. Sound yeah. pressure. Sound pressure is one of those things. We always just unplugged our subwoofer in the apartments because we're considerate. That's because you're thoughtful and you're not a flaming ass at. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I my sleep schedule was off when I was in school, <laughs> so people would play their music at you know normal people times during the day, and I would threaten to kill them. I thought they would, that you would be also awake and doing things, and that was not the no. case. I normally stayed up until I took Stephanie to class, and then I would go to bed until I had to pick her up. <laughs> You've done that till like a year ago. Essentially, <laughs> that was your schedule for most of yeah. your days. <laughs> what people are up at nine? What's wrong with you? Oh, I'll kill you. Small town news. <laughs> that one's yours. Oh, it's just, I don't... Coin Toss decides winner of small Illinois village election. There's villages in Illinois? I imagine, I mean, like, these people in, like, Lederhosen hanging out. Like, good thing <laughs> we beat the communist, day. Eh? <laughs> the flip of a coin has decided the next leader of a tiny town in southern Illinois after an election earlier this month ended in a tie. Williamson County Clerk Amanda Barnes said Ryan That's not what that name says. Brian Rakina. Rakina? Rakina. I'm just like Rakina. Because yeah. it's like Reiki. Yeah. Like Um, let fellow candidate Tammy O'Daniel Howe. Why are your names so shitty? <laughs> Choose heads or tails before the coin toss. She picked heads. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's it's you're more likely to land on heads if you flip a penny. Why? Uh, because the penny, the head, the the tails is heavier. I don't know. Look it up. It makes sense when you read it from other people. Huh? 
Uh, Barnes says she let both candidates inspect the 2016 North Dakota quarter before she tossed it. She said the quarter was the shiniest one I found in the office. Therefore, the so most funny. accurate. I feel like this is like uh, Gilmore Girls, <laughs> Stars <laughs> Hollow kind of shit. And it they're really like, is. everybody gather around for the coin dust. Barnes said she <clears throat> let it just fall to the ground and it landed on heads. Oh, Daniel Howe won, becoming village president in Culp. Home to 250 residents. The candidates each received 11 votes in the election. <laughs> they have 250 people living there and only 11 people or 22 people voted. <laughs> Illinois law calls for coin flips to settle ties. How do you like that shit? I, this is, this is what's wrong with everything is no one participates in the democratic process. Jefferson's all what like, an educated what populace is, is what we need. What? What is the math of, of 22 out of 250? Like, what is that percentage? It's like Somebody roughly 10%. 11%. Arawa, just like Jefferson wanted, coin toss elections. I read that backwards, but that's essentially what he said. <laughs> yeah, just people don't freaking care. That's how we end up in situations. Just people huh. don't care. That's really That's really depressing. Yeah. That's awful. Good news. Well, oh, we have a special today. Congratulations, uh, whatever the chick's name is, Harry Monkey O'Dowell. Uh, yeah, Harry Monkey O'Dowell. O'Dowell How? Don't hyphenate your damn name. Just keep your freaking surname if that's what you want, and then tack on the other one. Hyphenation is stupid, and it ruins both names. Yeah, because then you end up with a name like like Donald Williams McAvoy. Or yeah. McDonald do D Baser. I don't know. But it's bad names. And you're like people have to call you that. Either like, take take the drop your surname and then take his traditional. Keep your surname and then tack his on. Drop one of your names and then tack his on, but keep your surname. I, there's so many things you could do that don't involve a freaking hyphen. Yeah. One of our friends dropped their middle name and let made their maiden name their middle yeah. name. That's and it was like, really never heard Lots of that of before, but okay. I think everybody I've met does that down here. Really? My mom's like, I wish I would have done that because I hate my middle name. <laughs> I like your mom's middle name. Carly? A lot of people hate their middle names. That's Carlene's a made-up name. They just took Carlos and feminized it. Well, that's what they did with Stephanie. <laughs> they took Stephen and feminized it. Yeah, but Stephanie sounds pretty. Carlene sounds... It's fine. Your middle name's cool. My middle name is cool. My mom used to threaten me with my middle name, so my little name is super not cool. Names are dumb anyway. Did you know that nobody needs a middle name? Yeah, but it's fun. It is fun. I knew a guy with like three middle names. I don't know why you'd do that to somebody. That seems three, cruel. Yeah. It's, well, a lot of other countries, well, there's a few other countries do that. They'll have 15. I mean, they'll just tack on surnames to the end of it. Like you just want to name your after your grandfather and your uncle and his brother and the biblical figures that you like. And it's just like, you know, before you know it, you've got... Bob, Leroy, Daniel, Jesus, Von Hoopersnoot. And you're like, that's too many names. Jesus Hoopersnoot, I knew him. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Hoopersnoot, I, I remember we used to call him Jesus. Uh, special, Hi. special, special, special. We have a special. <laughs> okay, you can do the special. I got stuck. <laughs> Today is April 20th, better known to many as 420 or Weed Day. Uh, people around the world are celebrating the unofficial marijuana holiday by gathering for rallies, smokeouts, policy discussions, and thousands of other weed-centric events. The government's message is clear. Marijuana and the psychoactive compound within it, tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, poses a severe hazard to your health. To get a better sense of just how dangerous these substances are, the Huffington Post set out to compile a list of every person who has ever died solely as the result of a marijuana overdose. Here's what we found. There are no recorded instances of anyone dying from a fatal dose of marijuana alone. I, me and Stephanie debate this all the time. I, I wish they, so did you hear that West Virginia just uh, legalized it for um, medicinal use? Yeah, but they made it really difficult to manufacture it for medicinal use. So the funny Very thing is. Very difficult to get it. 
sixty percent of everybody in West Virginia abuses uh opioids. Opioids, prescription drug medicine, but the freaking plant. No. You can't have it. Do you think you can't have I need it. to ask people that are more in tune with the mindset of someone who would be in this position? But but do you think that if marijuana was made more available, it would cut down on the opioid abuse? I mean, I know opioids are awful. Stephanie's taken painkillers for when she had knee surgery, and she was oh addicted within a day. Like, she so, had withdrawal symptoms when yeah. she came off of them within two days. And she There's, was spent 24 hours and just... She felt like crap, too. Like, they made her feel worse than her broken knee did. Yeah, opioids are no joke. If you are... And that's... Yeah. If you are Jacob's, someone you know is struggling with opioid abuse, get help. Yeah, please. <laughs> Granted, they just put you on other addictive shit. <laughs> yeah, they're like, here's more addictive stuff to get off of your other addictive stuff. But they can charge you for that addictive shit. Yeah, I mean, you really... I don't think you should quit things like that cold turkey. I don't know. Seek actual help. No, but it, it sucks a butt. Seizures and all kinds of... Yeah. yeah it Jacob's sucks mom had to have it for... um. They put her on uh, hydrocodone? Yeah, that's the commonest. commonest. I think <laughs> she had it, the, the commonest. That's, <laughs> the that's, a, that's a newspaper Stephen and I co-authored called The Commonist. Yeah, it's a it's about the... It's, it's it comes articles. out every Saturday. You guys should check it out. It's articles Stephen, from, the former, shit for Saturday. from the former Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> I am writing for The Commonist. I like that. We totally have to do that now. Anybody that <laughs> likes to write, please join us in writing articles for the communist. <laughs> Let's just spell it the same way. Com yeah, the communist. It'll look uh, like communist, but it's communist. We'll it's just like up all in bold, the communist. Pronounce communist. <laughs> Pronounce communist. It's about normal everyday things. Yeah. It's the most yep. commonest things you run into on a daily basis. Oh my god, we can talk about Denmark and like the commonest factoids <laughs> we found out. It is often windy in Denmark. Yeah, it's very common that it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> commonest. The commonest, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 bad. Like she <laughs> she had more pain with that than she did with her like she was shaking at one point she's so she was in pain the drugs were making her super sick and we're just like oh my god what do we do so we we put her on something that was not as shitty yeah because i'm just like this uh, it's really depressing don't don't do drugs okay don't do it and if you do it find help and talk to people about it man yeah, you've got a problem. Hey, remember, all secrets are, uh, they die in the light. So get them out there or whatever. There's some saying that you're supposed to use. Like bad, bad secrets thrive in the darkness or something. I don't know. <laughs> that'll, that'll be in Saturday's issue of The Commonist. In The Commonist, we'll talk about how you should tell everybody your deepest, darkest secrets so you can get past it. Arrow smokes and drinks because he doesn't want to go to jail for murdering a lot of people. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't think that it's, it's necessarily something you should do. I think it's probably something you should not do, but I'm a fan of, uh, of what they call being, being mindfully sober at all times in a sense that, you know, if the zombie apocalypse breaks out, I don't want to be baked out of my mind and not able to properly function um baked out of my mind yeah that's what you would get you get baked out of your mind and i don't uh i like being in in control of the world around me i don't want it to be skewed so like yes i'm drinking a beer but it's a beer i never i always stop at two so i'm a little bit more conservative about these things than some people so i, I just uh, uh there was a halloween incident where i might have thrown up on somebody's car and I, I haven't drank a lot since then. That's good. You're making progress. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad day. Here's some things you just don't do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I just read this headline. Are y'all ready for it? There's no way you're ready for it. Woman attempts to use urine-filled condom to pass drug test. Ew, 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 what? 
What? Say the, what again? The imagery behind that just is gross to me. A milf How do you tie a condom. They're like all luby and they're gross. They're just. Ugh. A Milford woman is facing an obstruction of justice charge after trying to interfere with a drug test. Jamin DeWitt, <laughs> uh, 34, has been charged with obstruction of justice, a level 6 felony. I know they had levels. And interfering with a drug or alcohol screening test, a class B misdemeanor. According to an affidavit, DeWitt was placed into Koshkuko Community Corrections on March 3rd after until August 1st as a... Stipulation DeWitt has to subject to random drug screens. The affidavit continues that on April 12th, the director of KCC attempted to collect a urine sample from DeWitt. The director observed DeWitt using both hands to hold the cup to her groin area. DeWitt then became frustrated and advised that she was not going to test clean. When DeWitt stood up, the director observed a condom with what appeared to be urine in the toilet. The director removed the condom from the toilet. It's good, because this stuff clogs up your business and it's not good to do. Uh, the affidavit <laughs> states that DeWitt advised she had obtained the urine sample from her young son and placed the condom inside of her vagina so she wouldn't fail the drug test. Oh, DeWitt was booked in the Kashuko County Jail and held on a $5,250 bond. That is awful. And the fact that she had a young son give her the urine, this is not okay. She had pee in her vagina. She had related pee in her vagina. That's so awful. Could you invite, like, so you get a new perspective when you become a parent. Like, you, you, I see kids out in the world that I want to just take from people and be like, no, I will raise <laughs> your child because this is awful. You're like, doing it poorly. Like, before you're a parent, you look at other people with kids and you're like, that person's really jacked up. You shouldn't do that to a kid. When you become a parent, like, all kids are your kids. You're just like, <laughs> I will choke you if you do something to that kid. I don't even know him. I don't even know what he's like, but I know good and well that what you're doing is terrible. I, it, yeah. It's like yeah. you, I would never in a million years involve Sam in my, uh, in my, uh, whatever. Like if I had some Sam, bad deal need going you on. I'm going to pee in a condom so I can shove it up your, your mom's hoo ha. <laughs> yeah, like what the crap? What kind of family environment is that? It's not one. That's terrible. They should be ashamed of themselves. So oh. I'm assuming that there's a a drug issue in that family, in which case that's... This is the, probably the lightest thing she's, he's ever been asked to do. Unfortunately, yes. Because, I mean, when your brain's addicted to something, then that's it. Like, you, you either get help for it or... I mean, you're, you're, it's very rare that someone can help themselves and realize... I mean, they... they they may re she I'm sure she realized this wasn't the best situation for her to be in but at the same time her brain needs the fix so it's eh. just a bad situation like people are people you know we all are about a half a step from crazy all the time yes you know you just yes. for whatever reason don't do the thing and yeah it's really darn near impossible to help yourself without some sort of outside force yeah, and I mean, and that force has to be a constant thing, too. It's, so yeah, it's it can't not just, just disappear. Yeah, but I think the thing that's I've seen that's annoyed me to no end is when people smoke with their kid in the car. Or when they sit their kid on their lap and smoke. And I'm like, you're blowing smoke into a two-year-old's lungs. Yeah. Great. That's a carcinogen. Great. That's fantastic because that kid's going to get that for the next, like, however long and have breathing. Yeah. So I went to a restaurant once and the, the guy had his little girl on his lap. I mean, she was she was two or under and just blowing smoke right into her face. Yeah, but they don't care. The kid seems I'm fine, like, right? Dude. Yeah, a kid seems fine. So it's fine. I mean, if you're gonna smoke, fine, smoke, but at least give your your kid a chance to not. <laughs> it's like in the environment with you. It's, it's like just looking at all the science and all the knowledge and just going, eh? Who cares? I mean, I guess it's like sugar. Everybody knows that sugar's shitty and causes diabetes and is a carcinogen now and feeds tumors and it's just the most awful shit ever. But damn, Wally made a really good carrot cake and <laughs> I am eating that bitch. Well, we're so addicted to sugar. You're addicted Ooh. from the time you come out until the time you die. 
You're like must have sugar. That's why if you get a headache when you detox. My house, that would be fantastic. People Wally. keep bringing sugar to your house. That's how you get the sugar. You're like, I don't want to buy yeah, we it don't anymore. Buy it. I no. Don't buy that shit. I buy like spirulina in green packages. <laughs> and you just like here it is. I don't even know what to do with myself anymore. I I figured out that I've I'm gained more weight than I like because I noticed that my beard was looking a little fuller, but it wasn't any thicker. And I was like, that's just my chin growing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my actual beard. It's that? just my the fat in my chin is just going a little bit lower and it's making the beard look thicker. It's so terrible. Like, I'm just, it's like you, if I were to shave today, I'd be so disappointed in myself. I'd be like, what have I done? People grow I, beards to hide the fat on their face. Your face without a beard looks so foreign to me now. It really does. It's kind of weird. Because you've had that for you. Do, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> do this. Yeah. I, as, there's going to be a lag because I can't see it for a minute. Well, I'm doing the thing. That way you can see that I could you look like a pirate. Thing! You never did shave it like that, you jerk weasel. I don't want to shave my beard. But then everybody just, will know I'm fat. It's not beard, it's just your side cheeks. They'll know I'm fat if I shave my beard. Side cheeks are not a beard. They're side cheeks. No one knows I'm fat now. That's what you. That's what they call it when you see half a butt in a, a movie. There's, half a butt? Yeah, like half a butt. Like when somebody's turned sideways, it means it's not real nudity. That's side cheeks. It's like side boob. And you're like, oh, she was putting on her shirt, and I saw a side boob. Oh, side butt's a thing now? Side cheeks. Yeah, like, that's what they do. That's how they do to dudes in movies. They're like, oh, well. Oh, oh, side cheeks. I get it. I get it. I'm slower than shit. I get it. I was reading the chat about Pete dressing he grew a beard and his hair because he was too lazy to cut one of them. <laughs> that's pretty bad, man. I, uh, I shave my beard. It's yeah, just, it gets too long. Yeah, you, you know? look pretty rough when your beard grows in. Yeah, you kind of have yeah, a Jesus I'm... thing going on when you get a beard. Yeah, especially when I like do the part down the middle. Yeah, you've already. I'm got assuming the long this hair. is how Jesus wore his hair. No, Jesus did not look anything like the Renaissance portrayal. It upsets <laughs> I was me. Just like, why was Jesus white if he was from like? He wasn't. He looked more like Osama area. bin Laden than he does me and you. Can't say that though. That upsets people. <laughs> Jesus was our Lord and Savior and does not look like those Pakistani folks. Jesus did not have a tan. Jesus was pure white as snow and has washed our sins away. I'm sorry, but that is not true. It is not true. And I get upset historically when... Historically speaking, we do not use history in the Bible. <laughs> Bible. <laughs> what? I know. We went to a Baptist school. <laughs> <laughs> It upsets me when I know people who, who generally are, are much better than that. And I'm like, stop using pictures of Renaissance Jesus. Like, stop it. It's not yeah, real. Like the quotes all over. I, so we went to church on Easter and they showed the Renaissance uh, the Renaissance Jesus. But then they put a backwards baseball cap on him and he was holding a pizza. And I'm like, <laughs> legit. That was probably the best imagery and the best lesson I think I've ever had from just a picture and a single Bible verse. I was like, oh, well, that changes things. Jesus if you're curious, with you. if you're curious, please email me or tweet me and I will tell you all about it happily. It's very fast. <laughs> wait, wait, H and H would love to tell you about Pizza Jesus. We'd love to tell you about Pizza Jesus, but we're not going to do that on the show today. But we're more than willing to. Outside of someone, the, the you write a song about Pizza Jesus. Pizza Jesus, you the best. All right, WTF time. <laughs> dur, 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 <laughs> Pizza Jesus, WTF. <laughs> WTF. This is gonna be like we weren't being irreverent. We promise. Like, <laughs> it may sound like such we a were, good but juxtaposition. Our show's so stupid. We're like <laughs> transvestites and weeders and farts. We love Jesus. Loud sex capades. What the crap kind oh. of world do we? We just report the news. We don't do it. Incredibly loud sex interrupts Florida tennis match. Wow, where were they porking it? <laughs> like in the tennis court. Yeah, my ear itches. The real action at a Florida tennis match took place off the court. As Francis... 
Francis T. T it's like two syllables. Tiafo. That's three. Tiafo. Yeah. T. Tiafo. Oh, I don't know. And Mitchell Kruger. Freddy Krueger's uh, older brother. His cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Completed the Sarasota Open on Tuesday night. Their match was interrupted by a couple having sex across the way. How far is across the way? I don't know. Not far. How far is not far? I don't know. Across the way. Well, that is the most bizarre situation. <laughs> Announcer Mike. I can't say these people's name. What happened to Mike Smith? <laughs> Mike Cation. Sure. Mike Cation. That was pretty good. How's your Cation? Mike Cation is real good. <laughs> Said on the broadcast, I don't know how to put this, folks, but somebody's phone is going off in the stands, and it was an adult video. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, Keisha later confirmed porn wasn't the culprit. Nope, that's not a phone. That is, da da da. that's an apartment across the <laughs> lake. <gasps> Oh, no. Everyone was looking around to see where that was coming from and finally figured out that it wasn't a video. At least somebody's having a good night. <laughs> While spectators erupted with laughter in the stands, TFO shouted, It can't be that good. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Francis, one of America's top young talents, won the match in straight sets 6-3 and 6-2. Nice. Apparently... You know, that got his blood going. I'm assuming Francis is Why was it? How loud could it be? Ajax. Like, what does the tennis court even look like? I'm assuming it was like across a lake and then there were some there were some apartments and then somebody had the window. I wonder if they did it on purpose, though. Oh, you guys, there's a video. Oh, shite. There's a video and there's, there's audio. I don't know how to play it back to you, Smash. That's my only problem. Well, is I just I can watch the video. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can I can pass it back that direction. But yeah, holy crap, he's live on television. Can you imagine the announcer? <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, it was at night. Yeah, it was at night. They were pretty loud, but they. Did you hear it? Yeah, you could definitely hear it. Oh, I can't wait to watch this. You can definitely hear it. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. Live on TV. That is that is amazing. Man, that I don't even know how to end the show now. That is that is how we're gonna do it. That is how we're gonna end the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are amazing. Thank you all for coming out. Um shout out to our friend Arrowad and his RPG homebrewery.com. If you're interested in gathering some art and whatnot, he does some really awesome art i'm a big fan of the particular art style and he's cool so yeah that's the random shout out of the day um also man send us an email because we don't have any i don't think this week or some voicemails or something send your questions comments feedback and hate mail to h and h show at gmail.com call us leave us a voicemail at h and h live on skype download our show wherever you get shows hey if you want to do something really awesome review us on itunes and stitcher that would be great we could we could get a review with some stars we've been here 10 years if you haven't done that then man we could really use some good reviews if you haven't done it get off your ass and do it yeah, just say we're awesome and give you us five stars like all super nice about it i'm like for legit do the thing yeah do it it helps it helps us find more people uh you can follow us on twitter i'm steve h and h and ashley is fate kills p-h-a-t-e kills and you can follow two dorks tv for all the updates of when we go live when we post stuff to our youtube channel you should check out our YouTube channel. That's where you can find all the fancy pants YouTube stuff. It's tiny.cc slash two dorks TV. The TV is caps. And um, that will take you straight to our YouTube channel where you can see the latest episode of The Adventures of Steven with Thimbleweed Park, which is the coolest freaking video game ever. Okay, I maybe. found out secrets. It's so good. That game is so awesome. I'm having a blast. Stephanie asked me last night, she said, do you kind of regret just doing your uh, your adventures of Steven every Tuesday, and I was like, yes, particularly oh, now. <laughs> but then I was like, I can't just play games every night anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Tuesday is a great night; it's scheduled. I know I'm going to play an adventure game that night, uh, so that's just how it's going to be. I'm playing a Zelda game that night. You're going to go play that Zelda game as soon as we hang up, aren't you? Well, after you pee, after we hang up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like. E? Oh, I gotta, I gotta fix some of the stuff on the things because I didn't put the links in. Oh, fix the stuff that way I can post the thing. Yeah, 
good. Donate to us. Help us make the show better. Tip us, I should say. We went through that last week. Tip us. Yeah. Uh, oh, is it still on there as Donite? I, I don't know. On the notes, yeah. We should yeah. probably fix the template so that it says and tip. Uh, and we'll leave you guys with these words of wisdom to carry you through the next week until you find us again. And that's from Randy Pausch, who says, oh, that's the author of uh, The Last Lecture. Great book. You should read that if you haven't. He says, never, ever underestimate the importance of having fun. Yay, fun! Great. See you guys next time. Bye! Cut it, there's...